In this presentation, we will record the journal entry related to the payments of an installment note, including both principal and interest components. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Our data is on the left side and we have our annuity table, which will help us on the right side. We're gonna enter our journal entries into our general journal. We'll post them to our worksheet here. Our trial balance is in order with the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. Uh, debits being represented with positive, credits with negative, meaning that the debits equal the credits. And we have net income of 700,000 at this time. This is just to give us something in balance that we start with so that we can see the effect on the, on the accounting equation, individual accounts, and uh, account components here. Our data over here is that we had a loan initially of 100,000. The interest rate was 9%. 36 pay periods. So this is a normal installment type note that we're going to pay an equal amount each uh, each month for a loan of the 100,000. We then put that on the books so we can see it's on the books now because here's our note 100,000. We haven't made any payments. It's not been reduced at all. So we're going to make the first payment. So in order to do that, we have to have our table. Now note in practice, if you look at a, at a loan, they may only give you this information. They're gonna say, hey, here's the loan amount, here's the interest rate, here's the, um, the number of payments, here's the payment amount. And they may only give you less than this. They may not even give you all of this because they could leave one of these out, like uh, the payment amount, or they have to give you the payment. They may not tell you the interest rate, which you'd have to derive then from the other information because you, any of these left out, you can figure out what the other would be based on you know just math. So in any case, we, we know the payment, so you would think that obviously cash is affected, we're gonna pay this amount. So we know that, so we could even do that now and say, well, cash is affected. We're gonna say cash is gonna go down, cash is a debit balance amount, so we're gonna make it go down, doing the opposite thing to it. I'm gonna put that on the bottom, I'm gonna skip two lines because I happen to know that there are gonna be two other accounts. Uh, if you start to build this from scratch and you wanna put cash on top and credit it, do that. Uh, do that rather than thinking about something else first, you know, whatever makes sense to build this thing out. So I'm going to right click and paste one, two, three. Now the cash is going to be given, so it's just going to be the, or we can take it from the table. I'm going to say negative of this number. All of our payments are going to be the same. So it's negative of that number. And there we have it. But the problem is that, you know, cash, what are we paying for? We're paying for partially interest and partially principal. And we don't know what the breakout is based on this information, it doesn't tell us. So what we have to do is break that out with an amortization table. So we made the amortization table in a prior period, in a prior presentation. If um, they give you an amortization table, great. If they don't, oftentimes not, they don't, <laughs> then we can derive it, which we showed in a prior presentation. Once we have it, then we can say, okay, I'm gonna highlight this and let's say this is our first payment. And so we're paying this amount each time and this is how much we're going to break out to interest and principal. Note again, it changes each time. So it's not like we can just copy the first pay period. We can't just do what happened last time. We need the table. So, okay, so we're going to say interest is $750 and principal is $2,430. So we have interest expense. It's going to go up as all expenses do by the interest portion. So it's a, it's a debit balance account. We'll do the same thing to it, another debit. So I'll copy interest expense. We'll put that up top in B3, right click and paste one, two, three. And then I'm gonna say this equals, and I'm just gonna pick up the amount of interest per our amortization table, 750. And then the principal, of course, is the difference. It's gonna be this minus that or 2,300, uh, which should also be on our table, 2,430. So the difference is going to be reducing the principal. So the loan amount is going to go down, not by the full amount we paid, but by the amount that's not <laughs> allocated to the interest. 
So we'll copy the note payable, we'll put that here uh, in, in the middle and B4, right click and paste one, two, three. And I'm gonna put that, that's a debit because this is a credit amount. We need to make it go down. So we're doing the opposite thing to it. And obviously that's what we need to be in balance as well. So I'm gonna put a debit and say this equals, and I'll just pull this from the table. So there's our, there's our transaction here. So obviously these are two amounts that are being drawn from the table. Okay, and so once we finish this and record it, then our balance here should go down to that and we should record our, our 750 interest. So let's do that. So we're gonna say that interest is here. We're gonna record this here on our trial balance in H10 equals pointing to that 750. That's gonna bring interest up in the debit direction, put us out of balance and bring net income down. Then we'll record the note payable. Here's notes payable, here's notes payable. We're in the middle column in H6 equals. That's 2,430, bringing this 100,000 down by the 2,430 to 97,570. Uh, and then here's cash, here's cash. We're in H3 equals 3,180, bringing the cash down. So that puts us back in balance. So what happened, cash goes down, loan goes down but only by the amount of uh, allocated to the loan interest goes up by whatever the interest is bringing net income down only by the amount of interest so net income doesn't go down by the payment only the amount of interest the, the rest of it's just reducing the liability so this is the amount that we had to pay over and above that's why it's an expense uh, in this time period in order to help generate revenue okay so that's this amount then of course matches where we are now on our amortization table. Now we're gonna do this one more time and note this would be a month later. So obviously we, we wouldn't do it right after. A month would pass, our numbers would change based on whatever activity happened, but we're just gonna use the same trial balance to get an idea of what's happening month to month. This is a month later and we're gonna do this again. So I'm gonna unhighlight this. We're gonna make that blue again. And we're focusing on the second payment. I'm gonna make that green, right click and make it green. So we'll do the same thing. And, and if, you, if you're in practice, you're probably gonna say, well, it should be the same as last month. That's what the people always tell me to do, just copy last month. But you can't copy last month exactly because the interest portion is gonna change. The amount of payment will remain the same. So we can copy like the format. We can say, well, cash is affected. So I know that's gonna be the same as what we did last month. So I'm gonna skip a line, skip two more. I'm in B9, to put it on the bottom. Right click and paste one, two, three, that's the same. And the cash is gonna be a, a credit of this amount. That's what they standardized. When we make a loan, that's what they want to standardize because they want us to make it as easy as possible uh, You know, when we're thinking about it. But to do that, they made this complicated, the interest and principal portion. So the interest then, it's still gonna be debited, so we're gonna debit interest uh, here, but the amount will differ, and that's the, that's the part that won't be the same from time period to time period. And we'll have to get that from the table by saying equals, picking up in this case, the uh, 732. And then the difference will be the payment, uh, the note payable reduction. So the note payable is the credit balance, we're gonna make it go down. And that's gonna be the difference between these. Uh, 2,448, that's what we need, should also be what's on the amortization table. So it equals this 2,448. So that's what we have, and, and again, there's our journal entry. These are being derived from the table. So that's from there, that's from there. Once we post it, then this amount should be equal to this amount. So let's do that. We will say that here's the interest expense. We're gonna record that here. And again, note this is a month later. Obviously, you know, we probably have, our sales would have gone up and other expenses would have happened, but the interest expense would be the second month uh, of, the, of the 750, if we're talking about a year income statement, hasn't closed out to retained earnings yet. So we'll double click on it, say plus that 732, bringing the interest up, bringing net income down, and then we'll go to the note payable. Here's notes payable. Something's in it, so I'm gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, 
point to that 2448, bringing it down. And then here's cash, here's cash. We'll go to the middle, double click, end of it, plus 3,184, bringing the cash down. So now this amount here, this 95,122 is matching this amount. And that should be the case as we go through this. So we'll do this every time, every month. This amount will always tie out. The interest amount, of course, um, after, after the end of a time period, either the month or the year, will close out as all net income will, to retained earnings or the capital, whatever equity section, depending on the type of entity we're using. 